Growing up on the Penobscot River, my dad would take me and other youth out to do different activities. And it was very much so ingrained in us from a very young age how important the river is. When I grew up as a kid, my my uncle and my dad would take me out in the river fishing or would go out canoeing. And I think now, through the years after I've had kids, now I'm having exposing them to the river, to seeing how it is now is is a lot better than, than what I saw when I was younger. Now the fish are coming back, the alewives, the, um, the salmon, we're getting a lot more of the sea lion fish that are coming up so that my kids can experience that, like kind of how, how it used to be, like before they had the dams. This river has been here for thousands of years, and so has my people, the Penobscot Nation. And we have been utilizing it for our purposes, hunting, fishing, going from village to village. This is our highway. This has been our highway. It still is our highway. It is the Penobscot River, and we are the Penobscot Nation. My name's John Banks. I'm the Natural Resources Director for the Penobscot Indian Nation. I think our, our tribe is once again reuniting more with the river because there is, there is fish in the river now. We're part of this river. It flows in our veins. It defines who we are as Penobscot people and the river and culture tribe. My name is Rick Lawrence, and I'm the alewife warden for the town of Benton. There have been no fish here since about 1840, 1850, when the dams on the Kennebec River down below, the Edwards Dam in particular in Augusta, which was removed in 1999. And so in uh, 2009, when we first were permitted to harvest fish, it seemed rather minor. We were anticipating maybe $10,000 a year for the town and uh, an agreement with harvesters. But since then, it has uh, blossomed and bloomed. In the end, restoration really isn't about the science. It's about the people. It's about connecting people back to this natural resource, which belongs to us all collectively. When we started Elwide Harvesting, it wasn't, it wasn't to sell lobster bait, it was to ensure that we had bait enough for ourselves, you know, and it's turned into a, a, a substantial part of our income for the year. We've got fishermen from our town that, that will call through the day and don't want to drive the hour to come pick up a couple lobster crates worth of bait that they're going to need for tomorrow, so we'll take them home. We'll go in there anyway, so we bring them home to them, and they'll use them the next day for lobster bait. Going out with my son, it it's, means a lot. It's what I done when I was little with my dad. Hopefully keep it going for several more generations. Several more brooks and rivers in the state that they're working on rebuilding the fish population. And after several years of seeing how many fish are returning and sampling and what year classes they are, and then uh, they're gonna eventually you'll be able to harvest at other sites, and that will be very helpful, I think, for all the fishermen in Maine. My name's Molly Payne Wynn, and I'm the Freshwater Program Director with the Nature Conservancy in Maine. We are only a couple miles from the city of Portland, which is the biggest city in Maine, and we're standing next to this beautiful small stream, which is a tributary of the Presumpscot. This is a conserved area that folks can come and actually see the benefits of river restoration with their own eyes. The change that's being brought about by reconnecting our rivers and streams is really tangible, and people see that, and they see the value that restoring these ecosystems brings to not only them as individuals, but to their communities as well. I picked this spot because we did a restoration here about four years ago where we removed the dam and restored the floodplain. And it's a beautiful place that's healing. So when we restored the Setucket River here in East Bridgewater, we brought back river herring, which had been gone for quite a while. We brought back a beautiful floodplain that both provides important habitat for birds that you can hear in the background. And it also soaks up floodwaters. 
So when we get a lot of rain and have big storms, which are increasing with climate change, all of this area can soak up water and prevent it from causing flooding downstream. I think restoring a river, the best way to look at that is, is restoring their home. We're restoring your home. Restoring a river is restoring a home. It's putting people back, or it's putting, it's putting fish back and, and the wildlife back to, to where they belong. And restoring a river is, is a natural way. I mean, that's the way that we should do that. We have that relationship with the fish and with the animals. And, it, and it's, a whole, it's a whole cycle. And we need to do that. We need to re restore the rivers so that we can uh, maintain that balance. And know that this river is coming back to life and coming back to some aspect of, of what it was like for thousands of years.